breaking news. Listen, listen. Italy achieves unthinkable world record. No births in three months. Three months. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the entire country of Italy. What? They have not seen a birth in three months. Three. It's crazy. Italy is seeking to rival Japan's predictable extinction. It's known as the Biological Resource Center and a place with one promise. Connects those who wish to donate their body to science with medical research and education facilities. Turns out the donation was just the beginning. The owner accused of selling bodies and body parts. A trial set to begin in just months. And tonight, new grisly details of what the FBI says really happened. You will probably never see my account again. But I'm not going to ask you to follow me. That's not they clone Tyrone. That's giving me they ate Tyrone vibes, right? Meat. Alternatively, they can choose to jump into the water, but the flesh-eating fish in the water will instantly tear them into pieces. This is the lazy hell in the underworld, specifically designed to punish the lazy, and it's just one of the seven deadly sins. There are Off rip, I gotta see this movie. I haven't seen it, y'all. Like, but... Shit crazy. Are also hellfire soup for the sin of murder, tongue-pulling hell for the sin of lying, sinful mirror hell for the sin of betrayal, abyss hell for the sin of violence. Welcome back to the coolest channel on YouTube. Look, man, I got a special video for y'all in store today. Look, man, we back with another banger. I'm telling y'all, make sure y'all don't skip through this video or y'all gonna be lost in the sauce. Y'all already know how my compilations go. But look, check me out though, man. Just know if you're going through a tough time out here, look, I go through things, you go through things. Just know we're going through this thing called life together. You know what I'm saying? Tribe up, we, we good over here. You know what I'm saying? Positive vibes only. Let's get into this video. I don't want to have a conversation about nothing negative. I don't want to have a conversation about nobody who has something negative to say about me. If you come to my page and, and, and mention me, I just block you. People ask me, all, I met one dude, it's like, yo, man, you blocked me. And I said, you did some sucker shit. What I do, I don't know, but I only block people for sucker shit. The cold part is it don't got to be on my page. You say something about Neo on somebody else's page and you comment on Neo, I'm blocking you because you're a sucker. I don't care who you is. I be in regular places, people on other people's page. Like, I'm so anti-hater and with the sucker shit. When I see stuff happening, I see you do some sucker stuff to your man. I look at him, I block him. Man, that was your people. Y'all was rocking together. Y'all have, dang, you handle like that. Man, I can't rock with you. Block. I'm that dude. Circle be like, yo, bro, you be tripping. Why you block so and so? Like, what happened with this? And I be like, nah, I just seen them do suck and stuff. Like, I don't ever want you to even think that I like you. I don't want you to think that we friends. But I want positivity. And I don't like people who actually spill out hate. And I know they got hate in their heart. And they got hate in their life. I don't want to be connected to you. And I don't ever want to connect with you. Because I don't ever want to give you the ability to pass that on to me. An ATM. What we're going to do is transform the traditional banking industry. Now, I do not fit the picture of a banker. X.com, this is Julie. Raising $50 million is a matter of making a series of phone calls. And the money is there. I've sunk the great majority of, of my net worth into X.com, which is the new banking and mutual funds company on the internet that I've started. Big, big X. Exactly. X.com. I think X.com could absolutely be a, a multi-billion dollar bonanza because if you look at the industry that X is pursuing, it's the biggest sector of the world economy. This is an ATM. What are we going to do? this out, family. Hey, imagine. Look, y'all see what they're trying to do. It's right here in our faces, though. It's, it's for y'all to digest. It's, it is what it is, man. It, that's been part of the plan. You feel me? That's just not a new thing, right? Obviously, we all seen it. Hidden mysteries of the universe. On tonight's show, the pineal gland. A small sack of fluid located in the center of the human brain, the third eye. The ancient Egyptians believed you could vibrate the pineal gland, mm. allowing the consciousness to move any direction in space and time. Astral projection. And every vertebrate in the world has a pineal gland, except one, the hagfish. You are not a hagfish. I'm not a hagfish. You're not. The powers that be have just gunked up our pineal glands with fluoride. Hmm, fluoride? I don't know. Skeptical? Listen to this esteemed list of people who believe in astral projection. Okay, so your pineal gland has been calcified through fluoride. Fluoride is in the toothpaste and is also in our water. So in the Egyptian times, the Egyptians were able to move their astral body throughout space and time in different dimensions. 
But in the system, in this society that we are in today, we are unable to do those things that we once were able to do because our pineal glands have been calcified. Okay, so in the Bible, the pineal gland is referred to as the lamp of the body. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is full of light. Okay, so when your third eye is open and when you are in the Godhead, when you are in the higher realms, which is up here, your third eye and your crown chakra, you can enter your light body. Okay, what is the light body? The light body, the light body, I mean, the body of light, sometimes called the astral body or the subtle body is a quasi mat, a quasi material. What the fuck? Aspect of the human body being neither solely physical nor solely spiritual. Okay. Now check this out, family. Hold on, my fault. You want me to live the smallest, worst life? The light body that's why they use the sun because it's the, the the motherfucking sun is the light you know what i'm saying you enter your light body the astral body third eye higher realms higher consciousness when the body is full of light the astral. astral body you know what i'm saying when the body is full of light you know what i'm saying the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your body will also be full of light. Okay? Body full of light. All right? This is exactly why they calcify our pineal glands and put fluoride in our water and in our toothpaste because you are able to do things like this, like travel throughout the astral dimension in the astral plane. You know what I'm saying? The astral project. You know what I'm saying? And travel throughout this physical plane too in your astral body and other great things. You know what I'm saying? All of this stuff is spiritual, y'all. Beyond this physical layer is a spiritual realm. But you can't really see that because your pineal gland has been closed. Your spiritual access has been closed. All right? Y'all stay positive. Y'all stay happy. Most of all, just be thankful. 11-11. And when they died, they were like... 21 grams lighter. So what did the soul weigh 21 grams or 2.1 grams? Whatever it was. Did the soul that light? How much the soul weighed again? 21 grams. So tell what, me. they have a weight on the soul? No, but, but please, let me allow to tell you this one more time. Um, the, the, dead per, the person who's dying allowed them to do this test, and so they put them on a, a, a scale, and they weighed them, and once the man... Deceased, 21 grams were missing from his weight on the scale. And it happened to everyone, same thing. So it's 21 grams. So how did a 21 gram spirit do all this shit? Explain that to me. It's only 21 grams. That's not enough to get fucking high on, is it? <laughs> so this is the documented moment of conception. And the, the sperm enters the egg and there's this poof of light that comes off of it. Scientists are studying this and they're looking at it and they're like, okay, well, it looks like it's a release of zinc, a burst of zinc that comes off the egg and it creates this appearance. But any way you slice it, they can't explain a way that light happens when life happens. Is that amazing? Light happens when life happens. In the beginning, God spoke, boom, life entered the earth, light happened. When God spoke you into being, light happened. Life came and light happened. Biblically, we equate light with life. Light and life go together. It is the nature of God. And so when we walk in light, we are walking in life. So we live in a money world. See, look, this is what I'm saying, though, too. You got to think about this, yo. We are not the body, right? Why do you think we possess so many metals in our bodies? We're magnetic beings. We are energy beings, right? So what attracts us here and what's, what can contain us and keep us here is those metals and stuff, too.
Y'all got to really think about that shit. You know what I'm saying? We are much more than what you think. We're much more powerful than what you think. That's why I tell y'all to, you know, get distillers, you know, get purifiers and stuff like that. Make sure you're taking care of yourself because this vessel is very important for you to be able to communicate with the ethers, right? You know, so it's not just conspiracies and stuff like that, but let's hop into this though. Y'all feeling it? Y'all feeling it? We much more than that, man. Y'all can go look this stuff up yourself. Even uh, look up astral projection and stuff like that. The government has already released documents online about, you know, remote viewing and everything else like that. You're capable of much more than what you think. And we need to start thinking for ourselves. And that's what this channel is for. And I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Let's get back to it. Unfortunately. And money, in effect, has become God. Money determines which school you go to. Money determines what type of health care you get. It determines where you move to. You move to a Joburg, Cape Town because of money. Yeah. For some people, it determines who you get intimate with, have children with. Oh my gosh, I want to have his kids. Do you have you seen how much money he has? It's crazy. It's wild. And because there are a few people that control how money works in the world, they have defined how to access the money. If you are after money, sure. it is almost always going to be impossible to live a truthful life. The of God is money. It has always been money. You think all day about money. Some very few people, many of the tall whites, and some of the pale people also have a lot of this. And um, most of you are struggling from day to day because this makes it, this dependency, this slavery towards this God, which I just showed you. Uh, this dependency keeps you in check. You have to work for this God every day. You eat from this God every day. When you are born, you have to be paying with this God. And when you die, you cannot even have a hole in the earth without this God. This massive grinding disc is the cruelest punishment in hell. The punished individuals are required to run non-stop as stopping will result in being crushed into mincemeat. Alternatively, they can choose to jump into the water, but the flesh-eating fish in the water will instantly tear them into pieces. This is the lazy hell in the underworld, specifically designed to punish the lazy, and it's just one of the seven deadly sins. There are Off rip, I gotta see this movie. I haven't seen it, y'all. Like, but... Shit crazy. Are also hellfire soup for the sin of murder, tongue-pulling hell for the sin of lying, sinful mirror hell for the sin of betrayal, abyss hell for the sin of violence, frozen hell for the sin of injustice, and quicksand hell for the sin of filial impiety. Everyone has to undergo the judgment of these seven levels of hell within 49 days after death. Only if they are completely innocent can they be reincarnated. Otherwise, they will be forever unable to be reborn. Today, a special soul arrives here. He is a firefighter who had an accident during a rescue mission just five minutes ago. The safety rope was burned, and while he fell to the ground, he tightly protected the little girl he had just saved. The little girl was unharmed, but when he saw his own body and his sobbing teammates, he realized that he was dead. Soon, two underworld messengers came to take him to the underworld. The female messenger was elated because the card in her hand showed that firefighters are considered honored guests in the underworld by sacrificing himself to save others. He has accumulated great merit and is a righteous king. It should be noted that the last honored guest appeared 422 years ago. They were happy, but the firefighter couldn't accept it because he still had a frail and sick deaf mute mother. He couldn't just leave his mother behind like that. But suddenly, he found his feet suspended in the air and slowly sucked into the vortex behind him. The deceased didn't have the opportunity to bid farewell to their loved ones. Soon, the firefighter arrived in the underworld. Here, the firefighter met another messenger. Who is the boss here? The responsibility of the underworld messengers is to do their utmost to help the deceased reincarnate. The three of them brought the firefighter to the gate of hell. Since the firefighter is an honored guest, he could enter first. However, upon entering, the messenger was dumbfounded because the firefighter's first trial was actually the murder hell. It should be noted that the judgments in the seven levels of hell range from light to heavy, meaning that among the seven deadly sins, murder is the lightest accusation for the firefighter. The firefighter was stunned, saying, I've never killed anyone. The messenger explained that if one indirectly causes someone's death through words, actions, or online violence, they will also be convicted. Just then, the stone slab beneath the firefighter's feet suddenly cracked open, revealing a sea of fire below, where countless souls guilty of murder were being burned. The firefighter instinctively reached out to save them, but suddenly he was loudly reproached by a fearsome figure the king who rules over murder hell. He interrogated the firefighter, questioning why he abandoned the rescue of his colleague during a mission, resulting in the colleague's death who could have been saved. This is considered indirect manslaughter, weighed down by heavy memories and guilt. The firefighter remains silent. But is this really the truth? 
At this moment, the ambassador who defended him revealed the truth. It turned out that at the time, their colleague was trapped under a slab of stone and unable to move while the building was in imminent danger of collapsing. The colleague asked the firefighter to go and save the people first, and come back to save him later. After saving eight people, the firefighter wanted to return to save his colleague. But it was too late. The building had collapsed. After understanding the truth, the king made a judgment the firefighter was innocent. This also released the firefighter from the burden he had carried for years. Following that, the four of them arrived at the second trial the hell of laziness. Here, the souls are specifically judged on whether they were diligent in their lives or wasted their time. The kind-hearted old lady who rules over the hell of laziness reviewed the firefighter's life through a mirror and discovered that he had been hardworking his entire life. The old lady couldn't help but applaud and even wanted to write a biography for him. She asked the firefighter, what drives you to live so diligently? But the firefighter's answer shocked everyone. He replied, for money. As soon as the old lady heard this, her expression immediately changed. The messengers panicked as well, because money is called the false deity in hell, and worshipping it is also a sin. With a single command, the old lady pushed the firefighter's raft towards the waterfall. As the firefighter turned his head, he saw the terrifying scene below the waterfall. Think about that, hey, ring, ringing a bell, you know what I'm saying? But look, life is about balance you know like uh it's okay to have money don't feel guilty if you got money and everything else like that it's about your purpose it's about why you do things what is what is that for and did you notice when he got up there and he you know he i thought he was about to get out you feel me i'm why i was very intrigued but then his purpose on why is 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 is, is absolutely not the right thing you know it's not about flexing on people. It's not about nothing. What's your purpose? I know mine is. Let me know in the comments down below. What is your purpose for wanting money or getting money? Mine is to provide and help and to spread information, you know, to the masses in order to help people. I don't want my words to affect people and people fight and kill each other. That's not my purpose at all. You know, I'm a speaker. I'm here to inform. I'm here to, you know, get you to think different. I'm not here to convince you of anything. I just want us to start actually thinking for ourselves but yeah, yeah let's get back to it though let me know in the comments down below what's your purpose don't feel guilty if you got money it's, it ain't about that don't be so broke that your ass woke don't be so woke that your ass broke it only takes time just be patient i wrote that in the song just saying but i'm just saying breaking news listen listen italy achieves unthinkable world record no births in three months. three months. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the entire country of Italy. What? They have not seen a birth in three months. Three. It's crazy. Italy is seeking to rival Japan's predictable extinction event. So, yeah, they're going through an extinction event because Japan, I they said you. there are so many empty homes everywhere. You. That's why they're trying to offer it to couples that are willing to have babies mm. because they're not that far off from Italy. It's over, y'all. While once soon they're going to be offering like, look, just go home and clap cheeks. We need to reproduce at this point. Maybe uh the numbers are are just, somebody need to look that up. I've been looking it up, too, but it's a lot of information on this. It's like basically uh at this point, are they having more deaths than births at this point? Or is it just straight up like somebody let me know. I don't know everything. I've seen this. I'll research it a little bit. And it's like mixed reviews on this we approach this severely depleted birth rate happening as solely the major issue for asian circle not including south asian india of course what we're finding now is that in fact it is affecting the entire eu the entire or europe significantly as a whole what i told y'all except for one country which will put forth later unfortunately italy recently set a new all-time low where there have been no births in the entire country for three months oh my goodness i also brought up on my live that elon musk says since the 1970s that the world has been suffering a population collapse listen to this no we have an underpopulation boom. really yeah why? Why do you? So this that? is the most commonly misunderstood situation. Yeah, they definitely push that we have a overpopulation. Yeah, why is no, that? No, no, I don't know. It's just like I think it's like this is a holdover from like I don't know the seventies or something, you know. So there was a huge um, baby boom, 
like where people did have a ton of kids after World War II. But then the U.S. has actually been at the birth rate in the U.S. has been below replacement rate since like 71 or 72. Well, the like U.S. 50 how years. About, how 50 about years other countries US has been though? Below, below replacement rate. I know U.S., but how about other countries? Um, Not us. Though. Well, like China's got a huge population collapse problem. Really? Yeah. China, China, you actually get penalized if you have more, more than oh, one kid. No, you are you being serious? No, 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 they like they cut that off. No, they changed, so yeah, they changed like, it. So part of it is just like we're, we're operating on things that were true in the past but are no longer true. So Policies. China did have a one-child policy, but um, like about ten years ago, they changed it to a two-child policy, and then a few years ago, they changed it to a three-child policy, mm. and both rate kept plummeting the whole time. Ooh. My people, we already know what time it is. This is for entertainment purposes only. Let's get this shift. Like, share, and follow for more for videos like this. And also keep up with me on my other platform. Let's get this shift. Did you know the late night host Stephen Colbert did a skit in which he took a baby and sacrificed him to the devil? In this skit, Stephen Colbert says this demon or this devil is coming for him and he must appease him with the sacrifice of a man child. The room starts to fill up with smoke and Stephen Colbert reaches under the table, pulls the baby out and takes him toward the room the demon is in. While handing the baby over to the demon in the room, Stephen Colbert says, Take the baby, not me. Eat the baby, not me. After offering the baby as a sacrifice to the demon, he turns to his audience, smiles and says, I'm sure the baby will be fine. As the audience laughs and applauds it. And then there's Jimmy Kimmel, who also did a very disturbing skit in which he had a teddy bear who commented on how soft baby flesh was and walked around the home looking for a baby like this. He hovered over the baby. He talked about how innocent and defenseless the child was before saying he was the perfect size for a sacrifice to the devil and then commented how the baby's parents would never hear the baby's screams and then sacrificed the baby to Satan. And then there was Conan O'Brien who also used a teddy bear to make light of human sacrifice. And he had the teddy bear say that nothing you do matters because God isn't listening. Could it be that Hollywood and the media plays a part in programming us and desensitizing us to taking the innocence of children, distorting and perverting it? They've also been desensitizing us to the devil and God and spiritual things, yeah. calling good evil and evil good, putting light for darkness and darkness for light. They don't want us to know that there's a spiritual war taking place, a war between good and evil, light and darkness. Hollywood is used to program program us and keep us blind to the truth and the war for our minds and our souls taking place. So because of the censorship on these platforms, I created a Patreon so I can speak more openly and in depth without being banned like I have on YouTube. This is where my longer form content is. So if you appreciate my content and want to support, come on over and join the community or you can subscribe to my Instagram. Whether you've ever liked or shared or commented on any of my posts, sent messages of support, prayer, love. I appreciate it. May God bless you all. This video is for entertainment purposes only and it's to help you see, no pun intended, the lies that we are in. Let's get it. Madonna's 2019 performance for Madam X at Eurovision is bringing up a lot of questions today. Not just because she's wearing an X eye patch over her left eye, but because she has two dancers in the performance wearing a Israeli flag and a Palestine flag while performing in Tel Aviv in a performance where dancers wear gas masks just a year before the pandemic broke out. The performance starts with Madonna coming out of what looks like a giant cool. red demon head with horns. As she walks down the Masonic-like staircase, you can see a giant inverted satanic cross on the side of her outfit. Next, Madonna grabs the gas masks on her dancers, who are mostly men in white dresses, and she pushes them to the ground. One of the dancers is seen with a Palestine flag on the back of their dress, looking lifeless. This entire part of the performance is very symbolic considering this was 2019 and in 2020 the pandemic broke out when we were all masked. 
We oddly see the Statue of Liberty being destroyed, the downfall of America. Then the most controversial thing happens. A man wearing an Israeli flag and a woman wearing a Palestine flag with their arms crossed and an X behind their back walk up to Madonna. Then we see a really odd flashing of Manhattan's Port Authority, Ramp 96. Next, a blatant giant blue triangle takes over the stage, and then we see Madonna standing over an inverted dark palace with a giant inverted satanic cross. Appearing above her is Wake Up. For those that have eye to see, knows exactly what's going on. They always tell you everything before it happens. This is universal law, they have to. They make it seem like it's a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing. Remember what I always say, everything bad for them it's good for us to the see look my people everything is just not a coincidence or a conspiracy it's right here in our faces this stuff is already predetermined that's why they say that you know i showed you on the last video that this is a stage they're paid actors in this stuff and we've already caught paid actors paid crisis actors and everything else look at the news man Look at when they're about to show y'all something important, how blurry the camera gets. And then all of a sudden, you know, when they're not showing the stuff, you know, it's crystal clear. You know, it's a lot of BS. It's a lot of fluff. Not saying that some people aren't getting hurt, but this is scripted. Imagine, you know, being in a country where your government is funding both sides of the war. Oh, I forgot we're in one, but you know what I'm saying? Look, everything is just not a coincidence, y'all. Keep your eyes open. You want to know something else, though, too? Check this out. Remember when this whole thing started to pop off, they had a press conference. And do I need to drop that in the video to show y'all? Something's happening in another country, another area, right? Guess who they said, and amongst this Israel and Hamas stuff that's going on, they said that the biggest threat is African Americans. First of all, that's not who we are. I'm just going to let y'all know that's, a, that's, that's not who we are. That's a misnomer. That's, we're not African-Americans. We're not from Africa. And that's, that's the saying that America is not our land, y'all. We're aboriginals. But at the end of the day, though, they said their biggest threat is African-Americans. Like, what the hell do we have to do? What do we? You feel me? Now, y'all got to understand what's really going on, man. Like, understand what's really going on. This shit is happening right in front of us, and everybody want to be in denial and stuff like that, but it is what it is, y'all. Welcome to Jean Bones, home of the best looking, juiciest burgers in all of nowhere. Excuse me, who is the behind the door? says a very disgusting garnishment came with this fast food order. According to this complaint filed with the Licking County Health Department, he says this object was sitting on his chicken tenders. It's been more than five years since ABC 15 first exposed a scandal involving a body donation business in Phoenix. A place known as the Biological Resource Center and a place with one promise. Connects those who wish to donate their body to science with medical research and education facilities. Turns out the donation was just the beginning. The owner accused of selling bodies and body parts, a trial set to begin in just months, and tonight, new grisly details of what the FBI says really happened. ABC 15's Nicole Valdez is live, and Nicole, this paints a Frankenstein-like picture. 
Yeah, it really does. Katie and Steve, closed for years. This building off 24th Street and University doesn't look like much, but according to new claims in these court documents, the Biological Resource Center was essentially running a chop shop for human body parts, mixing, matching, and selling them in ways we never heard of until tonight. Described as unsettling, but it sounds a whole lot worse. One FBI agent revealing what it was really like inside the Phoenix body donation facility. In 2014, he saw everything from buckets of heads, arms, and legs to coolers filled with severed penises when the FBI raided the building. Confused and, and angry. We thought this was going to be doing some good. He even spotted a smaller head sewn onto a larger torso in a, quote, Frankenstein manner. It wasn't a choice we made. It wasn't a choice any of the families made. Body parts piled on top of each other inside Biological Resource Center where families donated their loved ones for medical research. Discoveries of uh, sickness and uh, disease, maybe come up with a cure. Some say the company violated everything they promised. Tragedy that's never resolved and it just keeps going on and deeper and deeper. The limbs, according to that agent, with no apparent identification. The company sued months after the FBI raided families claiming their loved ones weren't treated with dignity and respect, a promise written on their own consent forms. The company also accused of selling body parts for profit after saying they'd only use the parts they needed and would cremate the ones they didn't and return them. A torso with a head apparently went for 2400 bucks. A leg about 1100 They'd even sell knees and feet alone for under 500 Now the owner of the Biological Resource Center was already sentenced, but he was only given probation. He will be back in court in October, though, for several civil lawsuits filed by Arizona families. For now, we're live in Phoenix. Nicole Valdez, ABC 15, Arizona. Never thought I'd say this, y'all, but those body parts seem kind of cheap to me. Right? Like, oh, that's so... But this is crazy, though. I'm just mind-blown at this point. Like, like, what haven't we seen on this channel, bro? Y'all gotta go ahead and some, get this video to 20,000. Like, share this with your friends and family. Look, this is why I put my survival kit in the description down here y'all go ahead and tap in man because it's a lot going on that you know that you know that that's that that's coming to light and that's why we're going to continue to do these videos this is absurd right they had a they even had a bucket full of sausages and y'all know what i'm talking about it's probably in your hot dogs so let's get back to it genetic dna evidence of children's teeth in the food, in the burgers, which linked it back to, a, was it a West, not Wisconsin, Missouri or Wyoming, one of those states that's in the middle of nowhere, where they actually found human meat inside one of the processing plants at McDonald's. And they said, oh, it, we're not sure how it's happened. Maybe somebody fell in there, but they haven't reported it. But between McDonald's closing, the reports of the, now the Japanese, um, McDonald's try to pass the book, try to blame it on the Americans saying, we got the food from the USA. It didn't come from here. And then they said, oh, you know what? That's probably somebody playing a prank. But they're closing a lot of branches down at McDonald's. And McDonald's traditionally, Nick, in the last 40, 50 years has been one of the safest franchises you could buy. Because what they do is they do a very, very detailed demographic study of where you're going to put these McDonald's about the um, the income of the people, where they are, the population. They don't just put them randomly. They're very, very specific about where they are. So human meat in the McDonald's food, including children's teeth that have been ground up and put in there. Undercover human trafficking sting in Polk County history. More than 200 people are facing tonight among them a local school athletic director and coach and a few disney employees fox 13's carla byron joins us live from the polk county sheriff's office so carla this operation had some pretty significant results yeah, Sheriff Grady Judd said some of the suspects brought weapons or drugs with them to the undercover location. Some even brought their children with them, which is unusual to say the least. He adds a lot of the suspects and uh, victims were here in the country illegally. 
She's one of the human traffickers. Out of the 219 arrests in the undercover multi-agency operation. She's the one that was set in the appointments. She's the one that were prostituting two young ladies. Two suspects, one from Chicago and another from Orlando, were arrested for human trafficking, a life felony, and two others are still under investigation. He loaned her $2,200 to repair a vehicle, and she didn't have the money to pay it back. So he said, you're going to have to do prostitution. Investigators say the two are also undocumented. In fact, they say 35 of the suspects arrested were in the United States illegally, and three were victims of human trafficking. The sheriff says they're seeing more undocumented people in every operation they do. They were paying off the coyote. And hey, you heard about McDonald's giving out free fries every Friday until the end of the year. I ain't going to lie. I'm happy for the homeless, but y'all know this shit got 19 ingredients. So we about to go ahead and get into the 19 ingredients 19. that it got. Let's get it. First of all, 19 ingredients is crazy. I ain't doing all that. Including chemicals, fats, and acid. So one is beef flavoring. So if you vegan or vegetarian, because <laughs> that's wild. Next, we got dextrose. Dexter. It's a form of sugar that removes any natural sugars from the potatoes to help keep its golden appearance. And again, it's sprayed on the fries to keep it golden. Next is TBHQ. Real name to treachery, booty high, high drone and kick, none. And it's used to extend the storage life on the fries. That's why they don't inspire. Oh yeah, and too much dextrose can lead to weight gain, heart disease, diabetes, acne, no, mm, low energy and depression. And TBHQ might damage immunity, potentially promotes cancer, can lead to allergies and damage red blood cells and more. Now we got Prometheus dime dye silicone. And it's a form of silicone. It's used in skincare products and silly putty. Then you got trans fats, which is banned in other countries. And too much of it could cause cholesterol problems, heart disease, and strokes. And while other countries use other oils instead of trans fats, we still use it here in America. Hey, you grown, gonna do what you wanna do, though. Comment your thoughts right now. Wait, here's the deal. New research from the Mayo Clinic is showing that it can increase the risk for metabolic syndrome, especially for women. And that can mean increased risk for heart problems, stroke, and diabetes. But researchers say it's not just ramen. Any instant noodle products could be putting you in danger if you're eating them more than twice a week. So why are women affected the most? Probably because of BPA that's found in the packaging, which is known to mess with those estrogen levels. And a look at what exactly happens once ramen noodles make it into your stomach. And it's all thanks to a camera swallowed like a pill. You can see the stomach contracting back and forth, trying to grind up those noodles. The striking thing about our experiment, when you look at a time interval, one hour or two hours, we noticed that processed ramen noodles were less broken down than homemade ramen noodles. And take a closer look. You can clearly see the difference between 20 minutes and two hours of di noodles. You know what's crazy is, you know, um, you got to think, man, why are these foods okay to be on our shelves but banned in other countries? We have to really start critically thinking for ourselves, you know? It's okay to let certain things go. Um, I'm going to let y'all know, I let go of uh, sugars recently. And, you know, I was a hypocrite at one point because I'd be on here like, oh, we got to do better. But the whole time, i go bust down a whole thing of like... uh like gummy bears or some shit, you feel me? <laughs> but I stopped. I don't miss it. Actually, the other fresh foods taste like candy to me. Like it, it's it's crazy. It's beautiful, you know. As y'all can probably tell visually by looking at me, my gut health is better. My skin, my mind, no more brain fog. None of that stuff. You know, I'm changing. And if I want to be a pillar in my community. I have to actually back up the things that I'm saying. So let me know in the comments down below what's something that you're cutting. And if you're not, and if you haven't cut it, start today. Let's all start together. Let's cut something. Let me know in the comments down below what are you cutting out your diet. You know what I'm saying? We got to survive this thing. We got to be mentally clear if we're going to stick this thing out together. You know what I'm saying? Like I keep saying, let's try up. Merch dropping soon, too. I got something for y'all. Fun fact, America is now a third world country, officially, according to a new European study. I'm going to tell you about it. But unfortunately, I think a lot of Americans know this already. This is not just due to the healthcare crisis, okay? 70% of Americans have mental health issues, and they cannot get help for it. Why? Because three-fourths of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck right now. They don't even have enough money 
to get good food. This is not because of a food shortage, okay? It's simply because they literally can't get it. <laughs> they don't got no money. Homelessness, don't got no money. Homelessness, the worst it's ever been. Substance abuse, the worst it's ever been. Crime rates, through the roof. And I don't know if y'all know this, but because of all of that, other countries are telling their citizens not to travel to America. Not just because of the safety of their own citizens, but because there's a lack of safety for our own citizens. Fun fact, America is now a third- Tube of toothpaste. It says drug facts. I know it's a drug. If I were to give it to you, it'd have to be a prescription. That's for swallowing. When it comes to toothpaste, it also says don't swallow. And if you do swallow, contact a poison control center. Well, the amount of fluoride that they're talking about is a pea-sized amount of fluoride. You probably don't see that in, in, in advertisements, a pea-sized amount of fluoride. Usually when I see an advertisement, it looks more like a Dairy Queen ice cream cone. That amount is a quarter milligram of fluoride. Well, that's the same amount of fluoride as what we find in eight ounces of water. Quarter milligram of fluoride, quarter milligram of fluoride, don't swallow. If you do, call the Poison Control Center. Have you ever heard the expression that there's something in the water? Or this expression, they're putting something in the water. New worries tonight about the safety of America's water supply in the food. Food regulations have left American consumers exposed to chemicals and additives that have been banned in other countries. Some of the Europe is fake. West food regulations have left American consumers exposed to chemicals and additives that have been banned in other countries. Some of these ingredients may be linked to cancer and other health related issues. West food Europe is famous for its bread. But one ingredient is missing. Potassium bromate is a suspected carcinogen that's banned for human consumption in Europe as well as China and India, but legal in the US, where it's used by some food makers to Europe, it's strengthened dough and estimated to be present in over a hundred products. European countries take a much more cautious approach to food safety. It's not just potassium bromate, but many other chemicals and substances that are banned here in Europe over health concerns, but considered safe by the FDA. Is this label lying to you? The food may look good, but the facts will gross you out. The fecal indicator. What would happen to foods in the bakery that had passed their best before date? If it wasn't selling, we would cut the cake in half like this, and then each half would be packaged on its own. And each of the halves would have a new best before date put on it. I ain't gonna hold you. That's, that's fucking disgusting, y'all. <laughs> Uh, hey, look, shout out to all my people that's out here still eating that store-bought cake, man. That's the, the little slice. I, I, hey, y'all ain't gonna be able to look at a slice again the same. You feel me? But that's good that y'all here so y'all can see this. That's absolutely mind-blowing that they a company would do that. But what we've learned on this channel, man, is we shouldn't even be surprised at this point. <laughs> y'all check out the kit you know what i'm saying distill y'all water stop eating this bs you know what i'm saying make sure if you put anything in your body you know you know what it is man we got to start learning how long could those sit out for they Crazy. actually had uh, stickers on them for about two more weeks look at that cake right there look wondering why what, look she i ain't gonna hold you she was she was there eating the fuck out that cake. You can tell by the bill that's why you know what i'm saying certain people your body be doing weird shit i'm telling you if you cut sugar I've cut sugar and I lost like in a week, man, I, my body dropped like 10 pounds. Promise you. Look at my skin is way different now. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I turned over a whole new leaf. That was the last thing. I don't drink like that, like only on special occasions, but I ain't nothing special happened in my life. So I ain't been drinking. I ain't been smoking. Um, not even weed. Not none of that stuff. Uh, also cutting sugar change your life. I'm telling you to change your life. If you having digestive issues, cut your sugar, take probiotics. You know, distill your water, filter your showers. I'm telling you, I'm trying to put y'all on game, and it's in the description down below. Y'all don't have to click on my links. You can go find this stuff on your own. And then what would happen? After a couple of weeks, if it still hadn't sold, we would actually replace that sticker with the new one. So that's two additional weeks on top of the two weeks, on top of the weeks that it spent in the display case. Fruit tarts in the display case, we would take them and we would scrape off the fruit 
as it got older or less desirable looking or moldy, we would just retop it with new fruit. What did you do with meat that was past its best before day? Be said, what? You just gonna slide the moldy shit up and then. Oh, somebody need to ask for it. I ain't gonna hold you. Something like this, they would take, um, they dip it in blood, just dab it a little bit. You can see it looks a lot redder. We've got some marinated drumsticks here. Why is stuff marinated? Uh, things get marinated to hide the odor, and if there are any dark spots or, or whatever, to mask that and then put it out for sale. Is this toxic chemicals have been found in all brands of toilet paper all across the globe? They're known as PFAS. PFAS. PFAS are uh, one of the most threatening chemicals uh, ever invented. As many as 200 million Americans are exposed to PFAS. Holy sh. Have you guys heard about all the toxic forever chemicals they're finding in our toilet paper? Forever PFAS, chemicals. also known as forever chemicals, have been linked by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to a range of health issues, including decreased fertility, increased risk of certain cancers, reduced effectiveness of the immune systems, and more. Solution says Time Magazine, find a new way to manufacture toilet paper without PFAS or any of the precursors. The environment and our health depend on that. Well, I've got news for you, Time Magazine. Plant paper has already done that. Plant paper is 100% PFA free. Plant paper was tested for 25 PFAS, including the four most common ones found in toilet paper. All of it was found to be non-detectable. That's because plant paper is 100% toxin free. It's from super soft, organically grown bamboo. And what about the cost? Actually, not that much more. On average, one roll of plant paper is about 20 cents more. Since the average person uses about 70 rolls of toilet paper every year, that makes the yearly difference to less than $15 for PFA-free, bleach-free, formaldehyde-free plant paper. Still not convinced? Their site is filled with verified reviews from customers who rave about how strong and soft it is. Plus, they deliver right to your door for fast, free shipping, so you never have to worry about running out ever again. Yo, I got the link for that in the in the description down below. But that's a whole new take on like when you talking to somebody or you arguing, like shut up with your toxic ass. Like no, like for real, for real. Like you have a real reason to say shut up with your toxic ass now, because everybody walking around here with a toxic ass because you you got forever chemicals in it. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Like hey, look, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the description down below. It's crazy, yo. Get you, hey. <laughs> Get them for forever chemicals out your booty hole, man. Like it's it's crazy out here in these streets, man. Wonder why we got we so many issues. We have the habit of buying junk fast foods that have no actual food in them. We buy gallons of poisonous household cleaners when one degradable soft soap will do. We are poisoning our homes and wasting our hard-earned money for no good reason. Why? Because the advertising industry tells us to. They just want you to buy stuff. For example, if a company pollutes the environment or uses bad business practices, if you don't buy their stuff, they will change. If you don't want food with chemicals or GMOs in it, then don't buy it. The minute we start taking responsibility and spending our money wisely, every politician, every corporation and leader around the world is going to know that we have woken up. And that is the most important point in this film. All of the abuse in our system happens because we just roll over and take it. But when we get involved and start making the right decisions, everything changes. Our consumer choices are the easiest way for us to get involved in a very meaningful and powerful way. This is the 21st century. If we use our resources wisely, there is no reason why anyone shouldn't have what they need. There's no reason whatsoever why people are still starving to death on our planet. And the right. common man or woman, whether they are Israeli or Palestinian, Protestant or Catholic or Iraqi or American, the common man just wants to live in peace and justice in a clean environment. No company will continue a practice or a product that you, the consumer, will not buy. It's vitally important that you understand this because this gives you ultimate power to change the world you live in. Companies are extremely sensitive about you buying their products, but if you don't buy their stuff, they go out of business. That's not something many company is willing to consider. And by choosing to spend your money wisely, you can promote those companies that do business in a socially responsible way. Appear to contain meat. Clear Food says that there are some companies producing high quality hot dog, top scores to Butterball, McCormick, Ekrick, and Hebrew National. I'm not. 
The trends of YouTube in this video are so rare. There's 500 million users on TikTok, and you will probably never see my account again. But I'm not going to ask you to follow me. That's not they clone Tyrone. That's giving me they ate Tyrone vibes, right? Imagine a conspiracy of celebrities and people in power that like to talk about pizza a lot, but it's just pizza, right? And when you step back and you start... Pizzagate's not a real thing. I mean, but... Bill Cosby feasting on pizza as fury erupts over his shocking release. Please, who will eat pizza if I... Jennifer, yes? Harrison, I'm passing around and get the money for the pizza because nobody ever really... Uh... What do you have, Harvey? 200? I was with the children, I'd taken Beatrice to uh, a Pizza Express in Woking for a party at a, I suppose, sort of four or five in the afternoon. Why would you remember that so specifically? Why would you remember a, a Pizza Express birthday and being at home? Because going to Pizza Express in Woking is an unusual thing for me to do. I remember it weirdly distinctly. But as soon as somebody reminded me of it, I went, oh yes, I remember that. I mean, when I hear a political argument, whether it's from the right or the left, I always look for what's the grain of truth here? What's the part that's right? And like on the pedophilia argument, the answer is nothing. Jeffrey Epstein. Okay, Sex Island. I'm just saying, by running a pedophile ring for the world's elite, it just looked bad to the people who think that maybe the world's elite are running a pedophile ring. For the longest, you hear this stuff sounded so outlandish from like Epstein to even the shit with like Pizzagate and Haiti and you hear like, man, there's no, that shit is so dark. There's no way it can be true. And I would be reading this stuff and be like, something like, again, I'll be like, I'm not that much of a conspiracy theorist to be like, this stuff, they can't really be trafficking little kids and sleeping with them and that's, that's the, and, and still be billionaires and I'm like, most people don't want to cross the psychological line that this stuff is going on. We all have a mental defense mechanism. Uh, it's like it, finally admitting there's an elite pedophile ring. I mean, most people just don't want to go there. And, and the same is here. You, psychologically, you lose your safety, your security, and whatever innocence you have when you realize that this stuff is really going on. And it's a, it's a chore to cross over that barrier and realize, oh my gosh, this stuff is really happening. And that's why it takes critical thinking. The people have got to look at this stuff critically and see what they're being fed so they can cross that psychological line that they just refuse to, to see it when it's right in front of them. We want the names. Let me say that again. We want the names. We want the names of those that were clients of Jeffrey Epstein. We want the name. Well, he's dead, so... Uh...
Think about it, y'all. Remember when uh, all of this stuff was unfolding, how uh, when the people were getting indicted, some of your favorite celebrities were on that list, a lot of them actually. And you've seen some people with ankle monitors. And during that time, though, they had a lot of big distractions, a lot of big distractions. They're making Trump a distraction for people because Trump is exposing them on so many different levels. Last video I showed you when he was uh, exposing uh, Hillary about, you know, her her acts in Hades and taking the children. He he blatantly said that shit on TV. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, we 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 got to we got we got to get our evidence and stuff like that. But what I'm saying is, why would he say that to her? And why would she react that way? If you haven't seen it, go back, watch my last video. But I don't know, man. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that in the comments down below. It's weird how they be making jokes about pizza and stuff all the time. And then they playing around with child sacrifices on TV and stuff like that. It's nothing to joke about, especially with something such a serious topic. But then you would get offended when somebody, oh, you're anti-Semitic about this and this and this and this. But you don't care about the kids. It's something psychologically wrong with the people out here. If that's where our mind is at, our mind should be on our children and stuff like that. But it's more important for other things other than our children. I ain't getting that. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about it in the comments down below. Like I said, creepy weirdos. Okay. Have you ever seen the TikTok videos of Ellen DeGeneres and Jennifer Aniston all talking about pizza and the TikTok videos referring to pizza as like children? Well, in this movie, he thinks that he slept with two girls that are 15. And the movie's called Knock Knock. But listen to what he says. Oh, I get it now. Hold on. Free pizza. Free pizza. He thinks those two girls are under, are 15 years old. He said free pizza. And a lot of you weirdos would say, oh, this is just a movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're just as fucking creepy. You need to be on the Steve Wilcox show. Who refers to... That stuff as pizza. As pizza. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. I couldn't believe it when I heard him say, You came to my house and came on to me. It was free pizza. There's proof right there. It's ridiculous. They know you won't believe this. Have you ever wondered what really happened? to Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. Listen as Dick Gregory explains what he believes really happened to that plane. Where that was coming from is one of the most evil, vicious Navy bases in the history of the planet. They do stuff that would make Hitler look like Santa Claus. Yeah, Garcia. The significance of the location of this naval base is and and then I let y'all know fun fact though Diego Garcia I got stuck on Diego Garcia for like three months yo like we was flying and our one of our engines got messed up somehow and I was stuck on this island bro like the shit was the most boring shit ever very important so let's listen as Dick Gregory explains Diego Garcia and how it relates to Malaysian airline flight three seventy. Diego Garcia. That's where that first Malaysian plane is. That's where it landed. What we just saw was the actual flight path of Malaysian Airlines. Notice that it headed northwest and disappeared. And that just so happened to be towards Diego Garcia. And four scientists on it. Huh? 
20 scientists, but four had filed for patents. It was Malaysia, but they worked out of Austin, Texas, for Texas Instrument. And the ones behind that plane was Texas Instrument, the government, and Boeing, who made the plane. And everybody is stupid enough to believe that a plane almost a block long can just disappear. With the electronics we have, all the technology we have, the next generation of cars will come out, there'll be no drive. So when I was talking to this scientist about it, I said, well, that paddy wagons too. He said, yeah, why you ask that? I said, well, there's just more room to put riders. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's where we are. About 10 years ago, I'm with a scientist, and he said to me, he said, you know, the smart car, when it come out, there can be no more automobile fatalities. I said, why you gonna mess with me, man? They've been here, that why you think airplanes don't run into one another? Huh? That's been here, okay? And so, when you stop and think about, you know, the, the, the stuff left. So we got four of those top scientists. <laughs> that had filed for patents worth $400 billion. So if one, two, three of us and your brother, four, we filed for patents. And then here's a friend of y'all's who's with us. So five of us filed for patents. If we die before the patent is granted, then your brother, who wasn't on the plane with us, he owns them all. Mm -hmm. So those four scientists, and the fifth person was the Carlisle Group. Mm -hmm. They own them all now. The patent was granted three days after the plane was missing. <laughs> wow. Okay. And so what I'm saying is, this is this is a game, and if you can't follow that thread, then you don't. You don't see it. That's crazy. What were the patents for? Huh? What were the patents for? Well, the patents was, you heard people talk about they're gonna one day inject you and can control you. Well, these guys come up with something, they don't have to inject you, they just put it in this room, you come in and you smell it. That's, that's what they were for. Wait, what did he say? Could he be talking about nanotechnology? I don't know what it is, but it sounds scary. If anyone has any idea what he is referring to, please help us out in the comment section. And that's why they killed him. That's they might have not killed him. They might just let him sit there and die. Let's keep in mind that most of these bases have secret underground levels that go deep into the ground. Could those people be there? You be the judge. There's a theory that we haven't ever been to outer space because of a transparent barrier that surrounds our entire world and that past this barrier isn't open space or a vacuum, but water. Now, it all might sound crazy, but back in 1962, the US government launched a couple of nukes into the sky to allegedly test out the atmosphere's reaction to them, or that's what they want us to believe. But some say they were actually trying to see if they could crack that invisible barrier. Ironically enough, this program was called Operation Fishbowl. This theory is further speculated, as many have said that if you look at the stars with your own eyes, or zoom in on them with a camera, it seems to be twinkling or shining through a liquid-like substance. As rocket enthusiasts have observed, that rockets we have launched do seem to hit an invisible ceiling that causes a ripple-like effect that you would see in water, leading to a pretty strange theory. See, the thing about the ice wall is, this is what separates us from extraterrestrial creatures and extraterrestrial lands. They tell you the real world map looks like this to divide us up and to make things look bigger than they are. But the real world map should look something like this. Each specific land has its own ice wall and there are extraterrestrial lands and creatures outside of each specific land. The only reason they're coming out about aliens and ETs being real it is only because ETs exist beyond the ice wall, not in space. 
and it's far more likely for ETs and other creatures to exist beyond this ice wall and to come to our land. And they know this, and this is why they have conferences about ETs, because they're not in space. They're beyond the ice wall or really, really, really deep in the ocean. We're also in the age of Aquarius, so more information and unknown things will be shown to us. And they know that they're just only preparing us for it. Why do you think it's like so much uh, symb symbology around like, uh, you know, Kuku Khan, like uh, the serpent god coming from underneath the water and stuff like that. Uh, Avatar, the way of the water and that they're, they're showing you. And then in Avatar, they even look, man, they even told you who the who the who the who the green and, and, and the blue people are, who they represent and everything. So it's like, man, all of this stuff is right here in our face. And. It's just conspiracy that niggas, you know what I'm saying? Like, but meanwhile, you, you, you're drinking water from out the sink and, you know, you're taking a shower from the rusty ass fluoride water that's calcifying your penile gland, pineal gland. And, you know, you think that you have an opinion on things, but you're calcified, buddy. You know, like I, I don't I don't take opinions from people that are calcified. You feel me? So we got to get it together. <laughs> Just be, don't speak out of turn now until your shit is uncalcified. Description down below, get you some shit. Wake the fuck up. a space cemetery, right? All this time we thought that they were sending them Johns over to the Bermuda Triangle, but no. It's in an uninhabited area. Listen to this real quick. Listen. Nemo is the furthest place on the earth from land. And it is home to over 300 spacecraft and associated space debris including the MIR space station, the first ever object assembled in planetary orbit by Russian cosmonauts. Y'all don't find it weird that all of the space junk lines up right there? Like, even like the satellites and everything that's supposed to be floating in space, right? But they all fall in that specific area. Even when they're shooting off rockets. Bro, do y'all understand what's going on, what I'm saying right now? Just look at it, cousin. Listen, all of that shit goes right around there. Isn't that like just a little questionable? I find it funny when they shoot nukes into the sky, it goes straight up, and when they shoot rockets that's supposed to go to space, they curve. Why you got? Line and the shooting star particles come out in the space environment. So these are the different prototypes of the shooting star particles that we're experimenting with. And they essentially burn in different colors when they're re-entering the atmosphere. Oh, wow. So right now we have blue, orange, and green that yeah. have been tested and seen on the ground. We're experimenting with different materials to see colors and different brightnesses. Good morning, everyone. I have been getting a couple of questions here in the last few days uh, about meteors and uh, what meteors are and what meteor showers are. And I've already made a video showing you guys what, uh, what you think falling stars are, shooting stars. So now I'm going to show you what you think meteors and uh, meteor showers are. There's a difference between the two, but I'm going to show you how they do both of them. The uh, first one I'm going to show you is just a single meteor, or what you think is a meteor, and this is usually uh, how you see it uh, go across the sky. Now, let me show you what this truly is that you're seeing. Now, what I'm showing you right here is leaked photos of uh, some government agencies and some of their agents in hazmat suits going out into uh, this field collecting this big a wiry looking ball with a hole in the center of it. Now what this basically is, this is uh, kind of like a coil, like a heater coil. Coil, uh, coil, coil wire harnesses uh, heat. And that's kind of like what this does right here. It harnesses heat. Now this little hole uh, that you see in the, in the center of it, I'm gonna show you what that's for in a second. But like I said, this, this wire, wrapped wire, uh, harnesses heat. Uh, kind of like uh, this right here. Now, this is a, a car cigarette lighter with a wired coil inside it. 
And once you plug this in and your negative and your positive uh, connect, it heats that coil up and you see you get a red glare, fiery red glare, um, as you can see here. Okay, now this wire, that's what this wire does. It heats up and uh, that fireball that you see uh, flying across the sky, well, it's eventually you know, gotta land somewhere. And they've been found all over the place, Australia, Brazil and everything. So, uh, like I said, that wire ball, it, uh, it's like a coil, it, it harnesses the heat. That's the big fireball that you're seeing go across the sky. Now, the hole that you see in the center of that, right here, as you can see in this photo here, now, that's, that whatever this thing is filled with, I'm not sure what they fill these things with, kind of just like uh, fireworks. And this hole that you're seeing, that's where everything's released from, the gases, the smoke, uh, just like you see right here in this uh, smoke bomb. It's, it looks identical, just about. And here's another one here. And uh, like I said, there's all kinds of these things. You guys can look these up. I just put a few in here just to give you an example give you an idea what these things look like but anyways uh that hole like i said releases the gases chemicals smoke whatever is in this thing that's where it all releases from and that uh, smoke that you see go across the sky when this thing is flying across the sky or falling out of the sky basically where they're dropping it out of the airplane but uh, that 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 hole is where you get it's getting its momentum kind of like a uh, bottle rocket uh, which uh, you guys, all you guys have seen a bottle rocket. Well, same thing. It's got a little hole at the bottom of it, and that's where the flames shoot out at and gives it its momentum, and it shoots across the air. And then what happens when it gets up in the air? It pops, of course. Same thing you see here. It's nothing more than just a big firework show to deceive you. That's all it is. So the next time you see one of these flying across the sky, just remember, it's just a big firework. That's all it is. Just a big firework to keep you brainwashed. That's all it is. So anyways, let's move on to what meteor showers really are. Now, these are what they call meteor showers. Now I'm gonna show you how they really do this. Now this takes several planes to pull this off. Now, hold on show you guys some training footage how they practice doing it now this is leaked footage also so i don't know the exact location of where they practice doing these uh, meteor showers there but this is they kind of stay low when they do it here so nobody can really report it or see it but you know when they pull the actual stunt you know these guys are up really really high and it's really dark at night you can't see the planes and this is how they uh, do the meteor showers everyone have a good morning thanks for watching and god bless now we gotta thank to some idiot in the comments gonna be like oh that was a rocket so you're telling me that that the plane was going faster than what they shot out out of it rockets go crazy bro that's not a rocket you know that's something else but you know what i'm saying look take this for what it is take it however you want to take it you know what i'm saying look it is what it is people you know what i'm saying look i'm just here for my people that's willing to you know think outside the box and come back with your own you know thesis but it's a certain level of stupidity out here in the world but it is what it is people but look man hopefully y'all got something from this video right here all i'm doing is is spreading the word making sure that y'all just keep your eyes open so you can keep yourself and your family you know what i'm saying in, in, in good health as best as possible you know because one thing that it is happening is this information is flowing in a, in a different way in 2023 2024 to come you know nothing can be hidden from us and what we're doing is is having group discussions not saying that we're absolutely right about everything but what we can do is bind together and come up with the truth of things as a group so you know what i'm saying welcome to my tribe everybody tribe up you know what i'm saying i appreciate y'all and like i always say 
spread love because it's too much hate in this world love you guys see you in the next video and i'm out though oh and my two people that didn't get their money i still got y'all i just uh seen y'all emails i told y'all if y'all wasn't ready that night you know what i'm saying i had stuff to do and i went i ain't gonna be in a rush to just be tracking you down trying to give you some money now i'm just gonna keep it on book with you you feel me but look i still got y'all i'll be looking out for y'all but look i see y'all in the next one i'm out